So a pivotal moment in the spur towards the inauguration on May the 29th. The president-elect Bola Tinubu returns to Nigeria saying he's refreshed, ready for the task ahead, which in the immediate term includes pl plans for the transition and asking Nigerians to disregard rumors about his health. But those queries about his health persist. And so do questions about his apparent dual citizenship and whether this disqualifies him from being president. Meanwhile, he remains in the eye of the storm of the dispute over the outcome of the presidential election in which the Electoral Commission INEC declared him the winner but which the opposition are challenging in court throwing the door open to a legal battle for the soul of Nigeria whilst the rest of us wait in the box seats nibbling at our fingertips to see who will claim maximum bowling points in the final electoral race. They like they speculate. I'm heavy as the sun, and I'm okay. May 29 is not the calendar. The challenge ahead is beyond that. It's for all of us together, and we must be Paris and stay focused. That, 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 that is very, very important. Don't isolate one date. One date on the calendar doesn't mean anything. It's just an event. Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Well, for more on all that, I'm joined now in the studio by the political commentator, public affairs analyst, and keen supporter of Mr. Tinubu Prince, Kasim Afebu. Well, lovely to see you all, Bean. <laughs> Same here. Thank you very much for the opportunity. So, has Mr. Tinubu's return to Nigeria exploded some of the rumors concerning his ill health, as this day newspaper put it? <laughs> well, we all knew that uh, he, 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 he went for uh, refreshment, so to speak, because uh, after such a rigorous campaign, starting from January 2nd up to 25th of February, when the elections had, having traveled around all the states of the Federation, campaigning, holding town halls meetings and all of that, coupled with the governorship elections of March 11, it was just natural, no matter how strong you are, that you, you know, seek break. At least just to go and refresh and uh, do some kind of reflections on the elections and projections for mm the incoming government that you are already elected to lead. So we didn't, we didn't see that all of the hoopla as anything to worry about in terms of his health. Because before now, even last year, there were all kinds of rumors. Anytime he goes to the UK to relax or somewhere else, they will always raise concerns and all of that. Well, we still don't know, do we? I mean, some people ask whether he's mentally fit for the job. You are one of his supporters. When you hear that, what do you think? I just laugh at all of those, you know, uh, talk and narr narration because I've had opportunity to interact with him severally and one-on-one -on -one and all of that. And his responses are not just sharp and, uh, and deep. He also understands the dynamics in the country and uh, can connect to issues. You see, I, I told someone, I said, before I started supporting Abola Metinubu, I had an interaction with him. Not once, not twice, not three times. And we looked at a wide range of issues. We discussed issues, we interrogated issues, and he told me his own idea of the uh, kind of government he wants to run, how, he, how the challenges confronting us have to be tackled, and how he has to recruit sound minds, solid minds, solid brains to ensure that they're able to provide responses to the kind of challenges we are, that is confronting as a nation. As is not a peculiar situation, but to, 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 to be defeatist in your assessment, your approach, will be to miss the point altogether. So for him, he sees the challenge, like he said just now in, on TV, he said 29th of May, just, uh, it's, just, it's just a date, but the challenges ahead of us is mm. more than that. But, but you so, do understand why people are concerned about how much 
energy he has and about his mental focus because there are a lot of question marks about what his real age is and people have anxieties not just th that they don't like him they just want to have a president that they trust can do the job I mean, no, surely no. you can understand no, well, well the, 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 the outcome of the elections show that majority of Nigerians prefer him to every other well actually it's not majority of no. Nigerians if you add yeah, up, if you add up the opposition votes no way they're much higher than they're much more than what he got so no, it can't no, be the majority no, of no, no, voting no, Nigerians. no the requirement for being elected is purely simple majority vote and you score 25 percent in 25 24 you know to third of the no, no i understand that but but you made so the point that the majority point is, of nigerians he but got majority votes in the election no no he he, he got Charles, enough votes Charles. to tip him over the line according no, to no, INEC. No. but if you aggregate the votes of the opposition as a collective they're almost double what he got no that's not the way that's not that's not my reading of the situation you see you can have the two candidates of the opposition the major opposition apc in the pdp and uh, and the uh, Liberal Party, you can't have the two of them becoming winners. No, One no, but, 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 but the their supporters all opposed the APC. But in an election, one man who carries majority votes becomes the, can uh, the, the winner of the election. Well, obviously, in he, this he, case, has, he is in the president-elect at in the moment. In this case, Ashwajibola Mertenubu emerged a winner because he's got majority votes in the election. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that, that's understandable. Okay, that's fine. It's just the, the, the now, point that the you point, made yes. needed to be clarified. It's not, there's no clarification. No, well, there is a clarification. No clarification. But, but let's not there. dwell on that. Yes. Let, let me ask you this, um, because he is the president-elect, and is he, like his predecessor, Muhammadu Buhari, taking a leisurely ambling pace towards the change that he promised during the campaign? Is it going to be well, during, another APC-style crawl rather than a race. During the, during the campaigns, and I, I remember you invited me a couple of times yeah. to appear your program. And I we did enjoy tell you, talking with yes, you. I, yes, and I did tell you that a Tinubu presidency will be different from the President Buhari presidency because you don't expect the two of them to behave the same way. No, no, not of, exactly the in same In terms way. of their approach to governance yeah. and all of that. And... Uh, uh, Tinubu is an, is an interactive, uh, you know, uh, leader. He's conversational. He understands the issues. He engages issues. Mm. It's different from a, a president Buhari who is taciturn, a little bit, you know, more withdrawn and allows his aides to do the talking and all that. So, for me, well, if, if you ask me, I, I apologize for interrupting, but yeah. having seen what we saw at Chatham House when Mr. Tinubu was there, his aides did the talking. No, I mean, you he see, farmed off you see, the, the things that needed to be talked about to them. Charles, yeah. you see, those who are still being detained by all the processes of the elections, well, they will keep on agonizing and lamenting. But I think it's about time for us to look forward. No, because no. I'm coming, yeah, I'm okay. coming, allow me to learn. Yeah, because okay. the point is, I can choose to be a team player. And I said, because I'm a team player and I have lieutenants around me, I say respond to this because whether well, you like it or not, President Buhari could make the same argument. I'm coming. <laughs> when, whether you like it or not, yeah. when Tinubu becomes president, he's going to appoint people who will run different ministries. Yeah, of course. Handle different portfolios, home and abroad, ambassadors, and all of that. So if he doesn't have, if they don't have it, it, the, the buy-in, or he doesn't have their buy-in mm -hmm. in what he does, then he will not be carrying them along. They won't also understand the psychology behind and the philosophy behind his renewed hope agenda. So the point is. People may criticize, they may say this, they may say that, but you can't take away the fact that Bola Ahmed Tinubu understands governance, he's been there as a governor before, he's been a lawmaker, and so he has cognate experience to pilot this country, knowing full well that the country is made of several uh, pluralities, you know, diversities and all of that. So I am not going to be detained by the continuous you know, digging into those narrations. Ah, Chatham but it's House. a continuous it's a, process. No, Chatham House, I mean, Chatham House, the evolution. All of that put together made Tinubu to still win the election. Well, yeah, but the assessment of a president is an ongoing process. You don't say allow that him because to start. he won the election. Allow him to start and from, May, 20, get on. from I mean, May 29th, you're going to hit the ground, the ground running. You're going to be seeing the kind of uh, appointments he'll be well, making. Well, you're going to be seeing the kind yeah, of team he's going to put together, the cabinet he's going okay. to put together. Well, and he, the politics of it right. is also very key. Yeah.
but whether he runs or crawls, do you predict hard times ahead for many Nigerians? Because he will need to implement reforms and perhaps belt tightening quite a bit before Nigerians begin to see benefit or benefits. Or are there quick wins or low-hanging fruit which will help to blunt the edges of those hard times and those across the board reforms that Nigerians expect if this country is to move forward. I mean, you heard well, Fidel well, Sadita talking yeah. about one aspect of it, which is the rule of law. One, one thing that I know about him is the fact that he's got very strong political will. Will to take decision, boldness, courage, and ability to also interrogate issues. He's got that. And so, uh, I want to see, I want to believe that when he comes on stream by May 29th, he's going to be taking some very tough decisions, which in the long run will be to the benefit of Nigerians. Across Don't forget, the board. Across board. Right. Don't forget that he's inheriting, you know, a government that has its own challenges. And because government is a continuum, he needs to also process those challenges and right. take the decision that to be, you know, far-reaching, you know, in nipping them in the board. Like, like today I was discussing with someone, if you had read my column today in the back page of New Telegram, I well, said, have sent it to yes, I said, I will be happy to see a Tinubu eliminating the dual exchange rate policy. Mm. It's been long overdue. I want to see a president that has the courage to look in the face of those uh, round trippers to say, no, this cannot continue. For whatever it is, let's have a single exchange rate and let's see the benefit that will come in terms of economic terms. Mm. But those who are profiting from all of these uh, halitosis will never want to bend backward to say that, oh, they want to tolerate that. So every government has got its own saboteurs. He's got his own uh, economic buccaneers and uh, predictors. And so you expect that whatever a policy is coming, they are all already working on how to circumvent it. So I know Tinubu that is a, is a tough mind. Mm. He's, he understands the issues. And for that purpose, he's going to, to be taking some tough decisions. It's not like insecurity. I said in my column, I said, if he can interrogate or interact with people, IPOB, all of these people, put them on the round table. This call, this is a country. We want to build a country and all of that. Let's begin to find solutions instead of bloodletting and all of that. I think it will be going a long way to solving all of these problems without even raising a bayonet. That's just the way I feel. Yeah, th I think that's a, that's that's a good that's a good point and that's good advice. But will he be both a champion of um, economic and democratic development? And I emphasize democratic development because many Nigerians see him as someone whose emergence as president-elect, undermined the tenets of democracy. I don't know what you mean by tenets of democracy. Well, <laughs> I don't the, know. The, the word tenet is, see, is very easily you, you explained. See, no, you see, you see uh, Charles, just like I said, in an election, one person is expected to win. Mm. And we have seen even advanced democracies where there were infractions, where they were yeah, but you can see that there are where, where there are, there are issues I'm with coming, the where there are certain concerns with the electoral process in this coming. country. Is there he are, going to reform there, that? There are there are so many you know there are elections all over the world where yeah. there are infractions. And, but what is uppermost in the minds of the people is the is the is the development and growth of the country. So what is key? People should put in mind, those who are looking for presidency in this country, they always put in mind nationalistic patriotism. That is very key that in all of this we are talking about, don't break the, the roof. Just come down, use other, you know, civilized means to ventilate your anger and all of that. And whatever come out of the process, please accept it in the spirit of sports. Well, obviously, that's what because they're doing. There, there are mean, nobody's going around breaking there are things, are they? I'm telling I mean, you, people make predictions. No, just, no, no, just, no, no, nobody's I'm doing coming. that. People, I mean, people, people make predictions. Everyone has been very disciplined. I'm coming. People yeah. make predictions. Just today, Real Madrid just finished a match about 20 minutes ago. And Chaloti, the, 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 the coach, said that they were going to deal with Girona in the La Liga uh, match, that, match that, 31st. You know, this is their 31st match, and uh, they were going to catch up with Barcelona, you know, the, with, and, and shorten the 11 points gap. But you'll be shocked that Girona, a, more, more or less a second-rate club, defeated Madrid 4-2. And so you can make predict that you're going to win an election, but when you get into the terrain and the process of, you know, contesting that election, what you are 
projected may not be may not be the actual outcome. And but you must yeah, accept accept defeat with equanimity. No, no, no. They're, know, they're not, with they're, some sobriety. Well, you can't. But when you try to bring down the roof, no, no, no. They're not bringing know. down the roof. No, no, no. I've they, seen pronouncements. No, no, no. I've read pronouncements. No, that, that's not. That's I have not listened fair. to pronouncements. They don't accept the results of the election, and they have gone to court. No, they should keep it at yeah, that. But, but that's exactly what they're doing. They should just keep it at that's that. That's exactly uh -huh. what they're doing. They've uh -huh. gone to court. They uh -huh. don't believe the court is a pro that is the election was free and fair. No problem. The election, the the election was not free and fair. In America, done by the. It doesn't really matter no, what happened no, in America. No. We're talking about. Nigeria. Want, no, but people are drawing examples from the civilized democracy. No, no, no. But, 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 but democracy. No, so no, you, no, need the, the, use, the, well, you need to draw inferences from some of that. The bottom line. It's just line, to tell you that any human endeavor, you must give an element of error. Yeah, but you can't no make a how. comparison with America. America has completed the the whole the the, the process of seeking redress and all the courts have found in favor of Joe Biden. So the process is completed. In the case of Nigeria, well, it, is not, it have, hasn't even started. Will you have thought that there will be a process that will, no, that no, will no. lead to Well, well but that's processes. the whole point of the yes, rule so. of law that Fidelis yes. Odita was talking about. Whether well, you not. think or not, the rule of law is we there. Made, we made the suggestion that rather than bringing down the roof, Please seek redress in the law court. Yeah, but that's so what they've done. Level of, uh, you you keep talking about bringing up down the roof. Nobody's bringing down the roof. <laughs> I mean, I don't see the roof. I'm looking up at the roof. <laughs> And the roof is where it yeah. was uh, a few hours ago. And, uh, <laughs> but, I mean, yeah. given that in the wake of this, you have to admit, bruising election, because it was bruising, Many believe that Nigeria faces danger in all areas, including politics, economy, society, etc. How much is political reform coming top of the pecking order for him? Things like reconciliation, for example. I have country. told you earlier, I, just in this program, yeah. I said I would suggest to him that because he's a man who believes so much in dialogue, mm. he's conversational, is uh, interactional. There's a the need for constructive engagement, for collective bargaining, because the denominator of our collective existence is about the country, Nigeria. We don't have any other country we can call our own for now. Uh, we're all first class citizens in this place, even though opportunities may differ. Mm. And so for a man like him, who understands the issues, who fought in the trenches for this democracy, to birth this democracy, while others you know, uh, were playing along with the military, such a man knows the issue, he understands the issues. Now, how does he approach the issues will now be our next point of call. Right. And for him, he definitely will carry out reform so that you like it or not. He's also going to reach out to persons because there are you can have quick win solutions to some of these problems if you can just deploy the resource of dialogue. Mm. Dialogue is very key. I agree because with even you. in war times, yeah. no matter the, 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 the casualties, no matter the damages and all of the and carnage. You still come on a round table to discuss. Mm, just like Russia and Ukraine are suggesting, China, the Chinese government are suggesting that they should come to a round table to discuss. Because in all of this, you still need to, to sit on the mm. round table. So well, I will be seeing a Tinubu presidency that will engage with IPOB people, sit down on the round table. What are your grievances? Because you are, you are a government, mm. you have access to a lot of information that the ordinary person out there may not have. And some of these persons are also being misled into believing certain things. You know? So you'll be in a position of strength to be able to educate the minds of mm. those who that, are, that, that is you know, good advice. Yeah. But, I mean, do you also see elements of political revenge, which some would suggest was a hallmark of the out outgoing APC, Buhari government? I mean, are we likely to see that? Or are we How do you already mean seeing How do you mean that? Well, no. I mean, getting back at people who didn't vote for it. Ah, no. <laughs> or no. sections no, of the country no, that no, didn't vote no, for no, it. No, no, no. You because, see, I mean, we're, we're already seeing that. Some are arguing that we're seeing that in the setting up of his transition committee and the perception that he's omitted certain parts of the country. But don't, but don't, forget, don't forget that uh, the transition committee was essentially that of the outgoing government. Clinton who was only made to, uh, to submit to that 12 or 13 names yeah. and all that. So he could have balanced those 12 is, or 13 is, names this is as not, an uh, example of what he's going you to see, do going you see, forward. You see, you keep, when we keep getting detained in some of these issues, then we are not, we are not looking forward. You don't like the... But uh, that is at the heart no, no, of wait, the problem. No, you don't like the same faith ticket. 
I came on this program several times discussing same faith ticket. And I would thought that, oh, for God's sake, Nigerians are going to go to yeah, vote. Yeah, but still, Muslim there are a lot of people ticket. who are against but today, that. But today, same faith ticket produce leaders that will preserve this country for the next four years. Yeah, but the, the, and so, yeah, well, no, what I'm to, saying... You have to remember that that ticket be, is disputed. People must not be So, so you can't say 100% until it's no, gone no, through no, the no, process I'm, of I'm, the courts no, 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 that those people, that people actually well, accepted that do we same have, faith. Do we too. have a president-elect today, Charles? We have one. Yeah, you do. Do we have a, president, a vice president-elect? We have one. Mm. So... We have put pay to Christ of Islamization. Oh, we want to Islamize. Muslim, Muslim ticket and all of that. So please, in a secular country, I do understand the emotions and sentiments that, you know, factorize people's mind. But at the same time, people must know that it's about quality and competence of the leader, what he's bringing on the table. Because poverty does not know religion. Mm. has does not know religion. You go to hospital, you're not going to be asking for a Muslim or a Christian or other religion that's the to way, treat you. That's the way so, it ought to be. we should look at the country yeah. as a okay. common denominator and in the process, do things that to bring life, make life better okay. for the ordinary person. All right. I want to thank you very much indeed, Prince Kasima Febwe, who's a political commentator, public affairs analyst, and clearly keen supporter. Yes, I love that word, <laughs> king. Yes. I said clearly um, a clearly keen supporter king. Yes, I of love Bola that. Ahmed Tinubu. Tinubu. Yes. That's it for this edition <laughs> of Rise Prime Time. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Bye-bye, and thank you for watching.